Now the IOC container is a very important part of the Adonis framework and understanding how it works is definitely worth the time. By the end of this video, you will have a very firm grasp on how the IOC container works. We'll go through the documentation as well as the source code. So it's not a bad idea to have a pencil and paper handy as well. Now we'll soon also be covering the service providers and the igniter class, and they work really closely with the IOC container. So if you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss those updates. Now, if you're ready, Fire up your favorite code editor, open up the Adonis framework, and we'll get started. Okay, now before we get into the documentation or even into the source code, I want to help you form uh, a mental model for the larger concept that we'll be looking at here, the concept of an IOC container. Now, you can think about it as a large manual, and inside this manual are various instructions for building various objects. So if I wanted to know how to build, say, 10 different things, I would put the instructions for those 10 things in my manual, and then I would organize them by a special key, a unique identifier, and we could store that in, say, a table of contents. So whenever I wanted to create one of these objects, I just have to flip to my table of contents, look at the key, and then go to the page and find the instructions and follow the instructions and build the object, and then hand it back to uh, where I need it, right? So the IOC container serves as that. It serves as a central place to store instructions on how to create objects. Now, if we're looking at the documentation now at the very beginning, uh, what is tackled first is the reason why we want an IOC container, why we want to have that one central manual on how to create things. Because usually creating things is pretty complicated. The things that we want to create have dependencies. There are ingredients that are necessary and if we don't have those dependencies available then we can't build the objects that we need. And if we don't have that central manual, if we don't have that set way of doing it, then oftentimes we just kind of keep our instructions and our building, our building instructions throughout our code base and it's not organized very well. And it gets difficult to keep track of which instructions need what sort of ingredients or what sort of dependencies are uh, are necessary to build our objects. Keeping track of all that is difficult. So if we look at the first example here, a useless abstraction is described here. And this is a common scenario when you're making a, a, an app that's connecting to a database. You want to connect to that database once. And normally with a node app, you'll create a database.js file and you'll you know, fire up something like connects or SQLize and you'll you'll start a connection with your MySQL database and instead of connecting to it each time just like this whenever you need it, you connect the one time and then you're requiring that database file. So you see the name right here, database.js. You're going to bring that in whenever you need it throughout your code. And it's not so bad when you're just doing it with something like this, just a single database connection. But once you start to getting into other things and those things need configuration and setup, they have dependencies, keeping track of all of them gets complicated. And it makes managing the code base difficult, makes updates difficult, and it makes testing difficult as described just down here. So that's it in a nutshell, the reason why we want this central location called an IOC container to keep track of all this in a single place. That's It helps us manage all of this. So you can go through that example uh, as you wish, but that's pretty much the what you need to know to go further. Now with regards to Adonis, you can think of our IOC container as just being a large object that has a number of methods on it that allow us to read and write to another object where all of our instructions are stored and they're keyed by unique values that we'll use to look up our instructions when we need them. Now there are three functions that you need to understand first. The first two are bind and singleton functions. These are the two functions that are used to add new instructions to our container. The third function is the use function and this is the function that is used to look up instructions and actually create the objects that we need, returning them back to us so we can use them in our code. Now to help you understand all of this, I put together a very simplistic implementation of what happens in the real source code. So we'll take a look at this first, help to understand the concept, and then we'll dive into the actual source code and then you'll have a better idea of what's going on. 
So here's our main object, the IOC object. And within this object is another object called entries. And this is where all of our instructions are stored, keyed by unique strings called namespaces. So the namespaces is what we'll pass into the use function to look up our instructions. Now let's take a look at bind and singleton. The bind function is used if we want to store instructions for objects that we'll create more than once. The singleton function will be used to store instructions for anything that we want to create only once and from then on if we request it in subsequent times that will just return the object we already created. Now let's take a look at how this works. With bind, in the actual source code, we pass in a desired namespace and then the instructions. In the source code, these instructions are called a closure, meaning it's, a, it's an anonymous function that we pass in that has all of our steps for actually instantiating the objects, building the objects that we want then returned to us. And the namespace, of course, is that unique key that we'll use to store the instructions within our entries object. Within the source code, the entries are called bindings. So here what's happening is we're passing our, in our instructions. They're being stored as the closure property. The singleton flag is marked as false because we want to actually recreate this object every time we request it with the use function. And there is no need for a cached value in this case because, of course, we're returning a new instance each time. Now, if we look at the singleton function, this is only slightly different in that the singleton flag is set to true. And whenever we create this, we're actually storing it so we can return it again and again instead of creating a new object. And that'll become more clear if we look at the use function. So when we call the use function, we're passing in the namespace to look up those instructions for the object that we want. In the source code, we grab the instructions and we check to see if it's a singleton or not. If it's a singleton, and if there's a cached value, that means if we've already created this object, just return it. On the other hand, if it's a singleton and we don't have a cache value, then let's make it first, store that as a cache value, and then return it. Failing all that, then it mustn't be a singleton, and we just want to return a new object each time. Now each closure, each set of instructions, receives an instance of this, meaning the container itself. Why? Because when we're creating our objects, we may need to use other objects. We may need to use other instructions. So we need access to the use function. And that's why we pass in the IOC container each time. So we have access to the same lookups that we have in our initial use uh, call of the use function. That may sound a little abstract right now, but once we get into the source code, you'll see what I mean, and you'll see how all of this fits together. So it's now time to look at the Adonis source code to see how bind singleton and use are actually implemented in the framework. So I have another editor open here. And you can find the code for the IOC container in node modules at Adonis.js in the fold directory in source and IOC. And then there's a single file index in there. So if you open that up, you just scroll down a little bit, you'll see the beginning of the IOC class. And this is where we'll find bind, singleton, use, and a whole bunch of other things. The first thing I'll show you here is the bindings object. So this bindings object is just what we did here with entries. So this is the object that will be holding all of the instructions to create the various objects that we need. Quick aside, aliases, some of the namespaces we use. Recall we pass in a namespace as a way of uh, setting up a key. It's a string to identify, to uh, find that uh, those instructions that we put into the entries object. So these namespaces can get maybe difficult to remember. So uh, Adonis allows for the setting up of aliases. I'm not going to cover it in this video. Most likely in a future video, I'll go over this in a little more detail. Uh, same thing with auto loads. That's a very interesting feature, but not going to cover it in this video. So we'll jump down to uh, bind. Let's start with that. And you'll see that the implementation of bind here is not very different than what we did, aside for some, from some uh, error checking here. So the closure is being passed in. That's the anonymous function that's being passed in when bind is used. And this anonymous function is what contains the procedure for creating 
the new objects that uh, that we're requesting when we use the use function. So here it's called closure. In our code, I just called it instructions uh, to go along with my analogy. But the instructions are being set to the closure property on the entry that's going into what we now see is the bindings uh, object. So the closure is being set right here. It's being added to the bindings object with that namespace as the key. And singleton is false, cache value is null. This is not needed because it's not a singleton. Remember, bind is going to return a new object every time the use function is called. Now, singleton, which is just below that, is identical. Uh, both of them, there's a check to make sure that the closure is in fact a function. And this time the singleton is flagged as true. Just as we went over in our simple example, if, this, if it is a singleton, then it will be created the first time. It will then be cached in the cached value uh, property. And then that will be returned for every subsequent request with the use function. So let's jump down to the use function now. And that's uh, down here on line 711. The use function in the actual code is doing a little bit more than what our simple version allowed for. In our simple version, we're simply retrieving the entry that's on the entries object with the namespace key. Here, we are doing that, but Adonis allows for a little more, um, a little more to do. So we have uh, fakes for testing, we have aliases, and the autoloads that I mentioned earlier. So right here though is where our simple version is happening. So first it's checking that there is a binding, so it is added to the bindings object, and if it is, the binding will be resolved. So we'll jump down to this function, and this is the one that is doing what we did right here. Okay, so first thing, the binding is being retrieved, so there's the bindings object with the namespace key, we're just retrieving it from the object. And if it's a singleton, we'll return the cache value if it's there. If it's not, if this is false, then we'll create it. We'll then store it in the cache value, and then it'll be returned. So this code right here is significantly more terse than mine right here, but I decided to write it out that way first. I find it easier to read, but uh, I figured it would be easier to explain with this example as well. So just know that my two lines, uh, my two if statements right here is doing the same thing that's happening right here. And if it is not a singleton, then a new object will just be returned right away. And in both cases, the IOC container class, the object rather, is being passed into the closure. Again, to give the closure access to the uh, use method because it will need that. And we'll see that in a second when we look at service providers. So there we go. It's not too different than my simple version. There's just some uh, better error handling in the rest, but you can see that the it's not too hard to follow. So take some time to look through this yourself. Really try to get your head around it. Uh, perhaps go back to the documentation as well and take a look at uh, the explanation for bind and singleton, and it'll start to make more sense, especially when it's uh, talking about returning new objects each time or a single cache value. Now you'll start to be able to connect it with what's actually happening in the source code. So take the time to do that. And if you need any help with anything, please put a comment down below. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe because in the next videos, I will be going over service providers and the igniter class, two very important aspects of the way the Adonis framework works. So don't miss out on that. Thanks very much and we'll see you next time.